So tell us how you guys got involved in the show. Um, I was a big fan of the book. He wrote the novel. <laughs> Uh, we, I mean, we met in grad school when he was writing the first draft, and uh, in that time became screenwriting partners and working in features and been looking to get into television. And uh, always thought this would make an amazing series. And then when we saw the Netflix House of Cards announcement, uh, we're like, this is where we have to be. Uh, luckily, yeah, we're here. <laughs> and the book just came out this week, is that correct? Uh, no, the book came out a year ago. Oh, okay, I saw the date. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey. No, the correct date, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Different year. How are you going to fill up so much material if there's only one book? You're trying to expand the universe somehow? We have ideas. Yes. Can you tell like first, ideas? I mean, <laughs> are you allowed to share those ideas? The first season is the novel, mm-hmm. and uh, beyond that, it will take a life of its own. There is plenty of room for expansion mm-hmm. beyond the first season. Mm-hmm. Even within cool. the first season, there, yeah. I mean, there will be surprises for fans. Can you talk? No, go ahead. Can you talk about approaching a series where all of the episodes can be seen at one time versus doing something that you know spread out? over, you know, a certain number of weeks of the year. And our attitude towards that is that's the way people like us have been watching TV for the last couple of years anyway, and so it's a simple question of form follows function. Yeah, we got, I mean, we only binge watch ourselves and I think understand how that's, how people watch Netflix, and, and so we had the opportunity to write almost the entire season up front uh, and structure the whole thing to be watched that way right, before we show the and, and creatively, I think we looked at it as a 13-hour movie. Right. I mean, it wasn't... You know, there are 13 distinct episodes, but the truth is it's one long piece. And so, you know, if you binge watch it, you'll be getting the full sort of experience um, top to bottom. Um, you know, it's, it's funny, the uh, episode markers are sort of arbitrary. You know, it's uh, even though each one has sort of a you know beginning, middle, and end ish thing within it, um, this really is meant to be seen as a as a piece, and that was fun, by the way, when you work on the writing of it. That, that's um, it's sort of like a, a BBC kind of approach. And now not, this is my first one of these, so I'm new to this. And if I sound like an idiot, then I apologize. But um, it, it it sounds like a, a BBC sort of approach to have that sort of episodic. Um, well, like chapters for, for, but to do everything as a piece. Um, is that something that was intentional um, to, to sit down and say, okay, we're going to do this as this is the book, and we're just going to make it, you know, break it down like this? But Netflix is perfect to be able to present it this way. I mean, there was a reason why we went with Netflix and a not more conventional buyer. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The truth, that's exactly it. I mean, we, you know, we, the writers' room was taking the novel and breaking it into thirteen pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, expanding within some pieces, not expanding others, uh, right. and uh, f- you know, trying to find the best way to sort of make a progression that that uh, you know would compel you to keep watching the show, but also capture sort of the very cool and quirky and wonderful parts of the novel. Um, so, by the way, there is expansion within the series from the novel. So, if you've read the novel, there are surprises um, in the series that uh, are not in the, the novel. How about this? Is there anything from the novel that doesn't work on the show? I mean, there were certainly some things that just logistically had to be rethought given the given the constraints of production. Mm-hmm. That you know, it works better in the theater of imagination than it does when you have 150 people standing around, you know, um, and you're hemorrhaging money. <laughs> right. <laughs> is, is, such as since since it's not going to appear on the show, is there an example? I'd say. Well, like the execution of Shelley had to be rethought somewhat mm-hmm. because I mean, yeah. The way that she was conceived in the book probably would have been our entire uh, special effects budget. (laughs) (laughs) Too much. But I'd say as far as character and story, nothing was was cut, but there's plenty that was added that would be, I think, satisfying surprises for fans of the novel. Mm -hmm. 
the show start off, starts off really mysterious. We've seen the first three episodes, and there's a lot of things that are kind of implied, but not really explained very well. Uh, is that something where you hope to pay that off later in the season, since most people who actually watch it watch the whole thing? Is that kind of the goal, is you want to create this mystery? Why do people not like each other? Or why is this kind of going on? Is that something you're hoping to pay off later? Well, I mean, like, I, like you know, we've said... The first season was a pretty direct adaptation of the book and structured very similarly as the book. And so part of the reason of going for Netflix and being able to structure it all of a piece is exactly that, you know, not having to do the conventional thing where, um, you know, with a broadcast network pilot, you're somewhat spoon-feeding your audience and uh, Netflix gave us a lot more freedom. I'd say there are, yeah, there are definitely a number of... Uh, mysteries woven throughout the series and come to the last two episodes there will be heavyweight boxer slamming your face with uh, the kind of final leading things to the conclusion. It is true you didn't, we didn't have to explain it in that episode. You know, episodic television a lot is you set up a mystery you better explain it at the end of that episode or certainly not more than an episode later. Um, and there are mysteries in, in Hemlock that are set up that you don't learn the answer to until toward the end, you know, early on. So, um, again, the binge watch part of it, uh, that's, you know, I can't tell people what to do, but that's probably <laughs> the best way to watch it. Did you guys get any inspiration from The Killings, the, the show The Killing, because it had that kind of big mystery throughout the entire season? Not as series? such, because, I mean, I first started writing that book in 2006, so the killing didn't exist yet yeah. I haven't seen the killing so. <laughs> but we do no. have a lot of patience with our mystery but one thing you know I would say that a response against the killing which is a response that goes back to Twin Peaks that we wanted to avoid was this idea of setting up this over overarching mystery that um, extends across seasons that I think is not narratively ideal. I think that, you know, you basically want to solve the major mystery that you introduce within one season or else it's extremely likely that the cake will implode. <laughs> if this went only one season, you'd be completely satisfied. Uh, uh, Do you know when you'll hear about season two? Did you plan anything in the season that could carry over? We, we have detailed plans for future seasons, okay. yes, and expect that time. Um, given that this seems to be the way that TV is going to have that, that sort of extended uh, binge viewing approach, um, if you guys were to, say, be given a film project, I mean, we'd be looking at, like a, a, again, a pro uh, property, you know, a, an epic length dune type sort of you know, scenario where you just have a really sprawling three or four hour would you guys attempt something like that? Well, you know it's funny we are actually talking with Warner Brothers about a property which we can't mention here because the entire convention center would table. start yeah, would explode, <laughs> would explode. Yeah. but there was a particular project we were looking at um, that you know was in development at the studio and they were looking at it as a single movie as opposed to a franchise and you know kicking the tires and we just said you know you can't really do this as a single movie now what you could do is construct a movie and then laterally construct a TV series um, because you'd be using the same sets and costumes and etc and like ultimately we ended up we ended up not pursuing the conversation but at least like theoretically it is something but like what was attempted with Ron Howard and Dark Tower right because I mean like if you have you know you could the, it sounds really silly throwing around these numbers but you could amortize the budget of the TV show in a 150 million dollar movie mm -hmm. cool. that's like what the, I thought <laughs> yeah on Dark Tower <laughs>